Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, a classic anti-war novel, Johnny Got His Gun by Dalton Trumbo. Now, this is a book I read for my Disturbing Books project where I've been reading books that were recommended to me by viewers as being uh, particularly interesting works of disturbing fiction. Um, And this was a truly excellent book. I really thought this was a fantastic novel. Um, And one that I'm not... So certainly disturbing in parts. It didn't disturb me deeply, um, but it was undeniably a very powerful and moving novel. I really did think it was excellent. Um, So I'm going to talk a bit about the book, but before I do that, I want to talk a bit about the author. So Dalton Trumbo, the author, is a fascinating character. So started um, out as a kind of a journalist and writer, writing, you know, short pieces and things like that for for magazines. This was, I think, his second novel. So this came out in the 30s um, and won the National Book Award in 1939 for the most original novel. Um, But Trumbo is probably best remembered as a screenwriter. So he wrote the the screenplays for a number of very well-known films, including... Um, Roman Holiday and Spartacus, Um, but he's even better known um, as one of the Hollywood Ten. So the Hollywood Ten were a group of people, you know, working in Hollywood who refused to testify before the House Un-American Activities Committee that was run by Senator Joe McCarthy um, during the 50s. So, um, you know, McCarthy on his witch hunt against, um, you know, perceived communism in the entertainment industry um, you know went up against Hollywood and a a number of people had their careers ruined uh, by his uh, you know by his crusade Um, Trumbo was one of those you know people for a period of time at least you know he refused to testify um, and was blacklisted in Hollywood as a result albeit you know, some of those, well, both of those movies I've talked about, so Roman Holiday, he is uncredited as one of the screenwriters for because he couldn't, you know, his name couldn't be shown on the film um, because he was blacklisted. Uh, Spartacus, his name was included in the credits on and that kind of is one of the things that marked the end of that McCarthy era. The fact that, um, you know, he that Trumbo's name could be used uh, on celluloid again uh, was kind of indicative of the fact that the, the tide was moving slightly against McCarthy. So a really, really interesting character um, and, you know, fantastic a fantastic example of someone standing up for their beliefs and and you know not letting the establishment you know grind them down so you know fantastic and as i say this is a fantastic book so this is a book um, about a soldier in the first world war who's been horrifically injured in battle um, and the book basically is him lying in his hospital bed um, just remembering his past um, trying to figure out, you know, how he's going to live his life now, because um, his his injuries are, you know, absolutely life changing. Um, reflecting on how he came to be injured, um, and it's all kind of a, a, a wonderful stream of consciousness where you just get different memories kind of batting up against each other in a way that can almost be confusing at times, but somehow really works and and has a real power to it. And I think, you know, I was reflecting back on reading the book and and what makes it so powerful. And I think the thing is that it is so tightly focused on this one individual, this one soldier, and you really do feel like you get to know him as a person. You get to know, you know, what his childhood and teenage years were like, what his dreams were, what he wanted to do, how he came to be a soldier, how he came to be injured. You get his whole life laid out um, before you as he, you know, as he lies, you know, near to death at times. In, in this hospital bed. Um, and what that does is, you know, it reminds us that these are, you know, the, the people who fight in wars are real people. It's so easy when you hear statistics, you know, when you think back to the statistics you hear about the First World War and how many people died in some of those terrible battles, you know, as part of the trench warfare. It's easy just to think about the numbers and forget the individuals. And the, the power of this book is that it presents this this living person, this, you know, this completely three-dimensional character, someone you really feel like you get to know and you associate, you know, you you can then extrapolate that out and think, Jesus, this happened to millions of people. Um, So, you know, enormously powerful as a result of that. And and not wanting to get into spoilers, but Trombo does something that I thought was 
breathtaking towards the end of this book where the soldier gets kind of a glimmer of hope and it, and it is just such a powerful thing I, I, I'm getting emotional just recalling it now it was really really one of the most brilliant pieces of writing I've read for a while I really did think it was exceptional the kind of the, the final third of this book is just perfect um so yes a really really interesting and powerful book and you know well remembered and, and well known as a classic of anti-war literature to the extent that during the Vietnam War it was a book that you know many people read and, and reflected on um, as I've said as, as a book that talks about soldiers the casualties of war as as real people um, so yeah definitely worth reading um, unlike in, in many ways unlike any book uh, I've read to be honest with you um, I know that you know stream of consciousness books are um, you know kind of in vogue a bit at the moment aren't they um, I suspect this is a you know a very early example of one and, and a really good example of one that uses that technique to to give real power to its message um, but yeah it's, it's not it's that kind of slightly experimental style of writing that I don't often read um, and I think it can often just get in the way of the story and, and be annoying but in this book I think that you know the quality of the writing and the um, you know, the, the depth of the passion that Trumbo obviously has to get his message across really works with the, the style of storytelling to make for an incredibly powerful book. So, yeah, very, very much recommended. So, hope you found that interesting. Do let me know in the comments if you've read Johnny Got His Gun and what you thought of it. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're safe and well out there. I hope you're reading good stuff and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.